Good evening, everybody, and a very windy welcome. That sounds weird. Uh, here to Beauty in Sound with your host this evening, Richard McVeigh. Hello to you all. And maybe some other friends might join us later on if you're lucky. I'll try to keep them under control. How on earth are you this evening? It's very good to see you. So it's a windy night here um, in Hampshire. We're in the middle of another storm, lots of wind, and I can hear the rain on the window over there. But that hasn't deterred the bell ringers. They're still ringing away, it can rain or shine or wind. So they're cracking on, but I'm gonna send up a message on the walkie talkie because Virtual Church has started and they're overrunning. So how very dare they? So I'm going to, <laughs> I'm gonna send a message up to the bell tower and they are going to stop as soon as I play the next hymn, which, by the way, is a really good hymn. It's one of the best hymns we have here on Virtual Church because we have it fairly regularly simply because it gets requested fairly regularly. And who would I be if I didn't play your requests? I dread to think what would happen if I did not play your requests. You would throw things at the screen. You would be up in arms. You would, I would see all sorts of strange things going on in the chat. Bill Arati has just identified the bells of Doodlange in Luxembourg. Um, and what a wonderful organ it is. Okay, so first hymn, by the way, was requested by Derek Warren. Didn't give any reason for requesting it, but come down, O oh Love Divine, to Batoon down, down Anthony. Who needs a reason to request that? That's one of the greats, isn't it? Next one, which c c comes in from Luke, just simply Luke. Uh, could be uh, could be Skywalker. I don't know. It could be anyone um, who wants this tune. And I'm not going to announce it because by by bar two you will be singing it already. I promise. I hope you enjoy the show tonight. I hope you're sitting comfortably on your virtual chair. No, on your on your real chair. <laughs> that would be weird. Sitting on a virtual chair. How would that work? You'd just fall over, wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> um, and I hope you've got your favourite drink. And let's go. Bell ringers, can you stop playing please now? Oh, that's effective, isn't it? That's very effective. Let's go.
Well, it's very strange, wasn't it? YouTube just um, froze for a, a moment on a cord. I, I, I heard that as well. The cord wouldn't change. How very odd. YouTube has now hacked my organ and the cord would not change. Ugh, my fingers got stuck on that cord. That was a very strange thing. Naughty, you, naughty YouTube. Nothing to do with me, I tell you. Nothing, nothing to do with me. How could it possibly be your host tonight playing something wrong? I think YouTube just thought, do you know what? The congregation need to have a bit of a breath here because it's going to get very loud. They need to capture their breath and sing lustily. And I hope you did. I hope you did. Anyway, so that was, um, that was for Luke. Lukey boy, who requested Love Divine to the tune of Limeworm. The great tune. There is another tune, of course, which um, uh, is it's called Love Divine. It's by John Stainer. And it's a beautiful tune. That's the one. Um, but I think Blind Word is unbeatable, to be honest. So let's go to our number three. Let's go to our number third hymn. Our number third hymn. Good English tonight, as you can see. As you can... As you can... As you can hear, uh, yes, a great English by your host tonight. It's been a bit, quite an exciting day. Uh, let's have a go on the next hymn, which is number three. It's coming from Graham. Again, no surname. It's just Graham. Um, the Lord's my shepherd. Um, and he specifically asked for the tune Crimmond. So I think we ought to have Crimmond, don't you?
apologize if anyone is receiving uh, buffering um, messages or it, it's buffering for anybody. I think that is out of my hand. I get, the f I get a sneaky feeling that it's some, something down the line that is causing the buffering. And I suspect that if you watch this on catch up, it should be fine, okay? So you people watching on catch up, don't worry. For you people watching live, I think it should be okay at some point. There's a bit of a wind going on, there's a bit of a storm, and I suspect the wind has somehow got into a cable and is blowing the data back. It's pushing it back into BIS. The BIS organ is doing its best to push it down the line, but the wind is saying, no, boy, because everything looks fine, uh, fine here. And if, it's, if it looks fine here, and then it, it's, there's nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. So fingers crossed, it'll sort itself out. So that, um, the Psalm 23 to the beautiful tune Crimmond uh, was requested by Graham. And verse five, goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. That's, that's a positive, isn't it? And in God's house forevermore, my dwelling place shall be. So in God's house, i.e. the great heaven up there in the sky, or over there, or wherever it is, I don't know where it is, I haven't been, that's gonna be my house forever. Surely that is what Christianity, religion is all about, right? It's about going up there and saying, hello God, thanks for having me. Um, now, put the kettle on, it's been a long journey to get here, I've been waiting years, put the kettle on. So that's that is surely a, um, a joyful thing, isn't it? it? That's why it's a rousing, ending. Psalm 23 has got it all, hasn't it? It's got, verse 3 is like the, the, the verse where you, you're seeking um, and reassuring yourself that you are going to be comforted. You're going to, you're going to be safe when you're alone. You know, it says, yea, though I walk in the valley of death, um, I will fear no evil. Uh, I will fear no evil or no ill, it says here. It's all metaphors. You don't need to be literally walking through a graveyard with zombies coming at you or anything like that. It doesn't mean that. It basically is a metaphor that, you know, even even if I'm walking through this really scary place and people, the grim reaper is coming with me at me with an axe. Do you know what? I'm going to say, I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared of you. Why would I be scared of you? I'm not going to be, I'm not going to fear you. Because, and I'll tell you why, Mr. Grim Reaper, coming with me, at me with your axe. I'm going to say this to you because him, him up there, you know, the one who's putting the kettle on, he's with me. He's going to look after me. And he's, he's, got, a, he's got a staff, he's got a rod, and he's going to look after me. That's why I feel comforted. And the Grim Reaper will be like, oh, okay. But it's my job to scare people. Ooh. Well, I'm not scared of you, matey. Bugger off. Isn't that what it's saying? That's what verse 3 is. Have you never heard a better exclamation of what verse 3 is than that? I bet you haven't. Anyway, so, <laughs> verse, verse 3, that was, that was, words are, I've lost me tonight. Um, I've, 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 not, have, I've had nothing to drink. I've, had, I've taken nothing. I've had some chicken for tea. That's all. Oh, maybe that's why I'm loopy. Um, that was our third hymn tonight requested by Derek Warren is what I was going to say. Okay so let's now go into our fourth hymn which comes in from uh, Benjamin Yao um, and let me just find it and then I'll tell you why Benjamin has requested it. So he says um, requesting this hymn with a triple time meter in dedication to our very own Bill Ratey who has provided the timestamps and then Ben says, as I have been busy traveling these last few weeks to my neighboring country of Singapore. By the way, uh, Bill, did you get the link to my to the spreadsheet? Okay, and the hymn that Benjamin has requested is, Jesus is tenderly calling, calling thee home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love wilt thou roam, Father, Farther and farther away. Further, farther, farther away. Further away. F 
further away. I thought further was spelt with an F U. Farther and farther away. Someone might have to explain that to me. Why will why from the sunshine of love wilt thou roam farther and farther away? Is farther an older or alternative way of spelling further away? Is it the same word? Someone more learned than me will um will be able to explain that. Let's have a look at what's been going on here. So who've we got? Andrew Lowe. We've got new members, some new new channel members, Andrew Lowe. Um, Roger Kingston. Oh, actually, no, Roger, Roger Kingston's been a member for two months. Th uh, yeah, two months. Um, and Bill Rayty has been a mem member for 20 months. Ooh, medium term listener, I think, Bill. <laughs> um, him Himnally yours as a new member. Jerry Martin has donated 10 memberships. Thank you very much, Jerry. Um, and $20. What? Jerry, you're very naughty. But thank you very much. Let's get some ice cubes in the glass on this cold and frosty day, at least here in the USA. Uh, and Vince Evans is a member. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, so whoever is a new member, welcome to the club. Let's get on with our next hymn. Uh, Jesus uh, is calling. So Richard Allegro says, Father is distance. And James Palmer confirms, Father equals literal further equals symbolic. Father and further are both usable words, says Glenn. Well, I, it's new, new to me. <laughs> We're having an English lesson tonight. Okay, let's have a go. I've, I've not played anything for ages, uh, so I should play something. I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to pull out stops. Oh, that one, and that one, and that one. Press that button. Push that one in. Let's go.
So as Benjamin says, it's definitely in a triple time meter and it gives you that sort of lilting uh, feeling. Pa-dum, pum, pa -dum, dum, one and uh, two and uh, I played it a little bit under tempo. I think it could have possibly have gone a bit further, but uh, faster, but uh, I actually wanted to hold that one back a little bit. Words, which I'm sure some of you will be interested in, were by um, Fanny Crosby. We had quite a lot of um, Fanny Crosby uh, hymns last week and um, I think Benjamin probably had that in mind when requesting this one as well. Bill, thank you very much for your two donations just now. What was it? Um, Ten dollars, thank you very much, and a, tw and a two dollars as well there. Uh, thank you all very much for your generosity so far this evening. Paul Frey, welcome to Percy Whitlock. That's a great um, uh, tier to be part of because Percy Whitlock is a great composer, of course. Um, one of, wrote one of my favourite organ pieces, simply called Folk Tune. And you know what, Paul? I might just play that for you tonight. I fancy playing that folk tune. Gorgeous, and it'll work really well on this organ. So let's go into our next uh, hymn tonight, which comes in from... Uh, I'm not sure that's a name. I think it's, uh, it looks more like a town, a Welsh, a Welsh town name. It might be uh, someone's name, I don't know. Uh, if it is, I deeply apologise. But it looks like Hlanfair. Double L A N F I F A I R. Um, and it's, oh, that I had a thousand voices. Um, to the tune, oh, das ich. Let me just see if I can find it. Oh, that. And that's it. I'll type in, oh, das ich. Because that might, might give it a bit more chance to finding it quicker. There it is. Oh, that I had a thousand voices to praise my God with thousand tongues. My heart, which in the Lord rejoices, would then proclaim in grateful songs. To all, wherever I might be, what great things God hath done for me. And this comes in from, like I say, Clanfair, double L-A-N-F-I-R. Are you in with us? If you are, please do say hello. Okay, let's have a go at this one. Okay, let's do this one.
Yes, please, that would be lovely. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was just talking to a mysterious voice in the distance. It wasn't the Grim Reaper, don't worry. I don't think it was. It was a bit too high pitched for the Grim Reaper. I suspect that the Grim Reaper has a, a, a lower, more mysterious voice. Something like, oh, Hello, Mr. McVeigh, how are you this evening? If you've just come into the chat or you've just tuned into the video, you're thinking, what on earth is going on? For those of you who've been watching for about 20 minutes, know the full story. You know it, don't you, Bobby? Right, thank you very much, uh, Lanfer. How, how do we pronounce that, by the way? In, in Welsh, it would uh, double L is. Uh, well, English, I can't do it. <laughs> but it's something like that, isn't it? Um, yes, Doug spotted her. There she is, look. Anyway, so Bill Ratey has now come up. Trump's here. Bill's having a bit of fun. So Bill has um, requested one hymn, but to two different tunes. The tune is O for a Thousand Tongs. And um, we're going to have two tunes. It's Asmon and Richmond. Bobby, it's not really an ideal place for you to stand, my darling, is it? I know you have no idea what's going on what I'm actually doing, but I tell you now, it's not ideal for you to stand there. Luckily, none of the stops are pulled out. So, Bill, as I've just said, I think I think I said it, Bill has requested the tunes Asmon and Richmond, number 346 in the old <laughs> New English hymnal. Hey, Bobby. Can I have, my, have some of that now, actually, because I'm actually quite quite thirsty. Yeah, do you want me to put it in the, in the shelf? No. No? Oh, actually, because I've got, lo uh, got loads of stops down there. I've got some stops there. I don't it's normally... normally I don't... It's a big organ, isn't it? Take that away, then. It's a great it's specification. Making... There's only three They. Spare. It's messy. It is. Organist Dan, thank you very much for your two quid. I'll play Juju Joy, of course I will. Um, Josh, my producer, has just made a note of that, so thank you very much. I'll play that for you later on. Yes, good, good idea. Okay, so, Bill, Asmon, and then Richmond. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of his grace. Uh, tune, uh, the text uh, is by the great, the great Charles Wesley. So, let's have a bit of a, let's have a bit of a vote for this one. Bobby, I fed you literally before going live. Why are you being fussy like this? Go on, go on. So first, let's have a vote to see which one, which tune is the winner. Now, what am I doing? I need to do a, a poll. Uh, start a poll. Asmon Richmond. No, not really. <laughs> Quite literally, you're at Richard. Richmond. Uh, and it's what is it? Oh, for a thousand tongues. Wow. Okay, so whilst I'm playing these two hymn tunes, no, these hymn tunes, like it's on. You need to plug it in though. Uh, sorry, turn it on. You need to press the button for ages. Whilst you do that, I'm going to start playing. That's all right.
well, two great tunes, and I think um, someone actually did say something that I was actually thinking. Uh, Richard Roger, uh, Roger Richard said, has been a bit slow for my tastes. Yes, Roger, I, 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 I thought that, but the reason it was at that, that tempo was the, the sort of the metronome pulse was actually the same, largely the same for each hymn. I try to keep it the same, so. That's why it was that tempo. And actually, actually, I'll um, say, Bill Ratey, did, I didn't read this to you. But, um, Asmon may not be Lingam, yet serves this hymn text well, if played at uh, a jaunty 75 beats per minute. Well, I tell you what then, let's just reassess ourselves here. Um, go to my um, metronome. I think that must be a minim pulse. Okay, let's try that. One verse at, at this jaunty tempo. You Americans know what a minim is, don't you? This is a word you use, presumably. Not like a 21st note or something. 23rd note? 25th note? I, well, I don't know. I don't know what number it is. But it's a minim. It's the, the note with the hole in the middle. Minim. It's got a name. That's fast. <laughs> well, I get that speed actually. It would be over in a flash, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would make the service shorter. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at the um, the poll to see who uh, which hymn tune. Oh, look, Richmond. Richmond uh, gets it by quite a quite a margin there actually. Sixty three percent of you. Um, voted for Richmond, 36 voted for Asmon. Interestingly, on only 71 votes, yet there are over 250 of you watching. Oh, oh well. So Richmond is the winner. R Richmond is de facto the best tune out of those two for those words. Well, that's not me saying that, that's you. Demographic. Democracy is the word I meant. Okay, we're making really good progress here, actually. Um, so our eighth hymn, or should I say our eighth hymn tune, because Bill had two there, comes in from Daniel, Daniel Kubaki, who says, uh, oh, he says, like Dorothy said when she clicked her heels, there's no place like home. So the words are, the first line, mid pleasures and palaces Though we may roam, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. It's not one that f feels familiar to me. Looks like a really old, looks like a really old um, hymn book. This. Um, it's a scan. So uh, here are the words. Mid pleasures and palaces, though we may roam, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. A charm from the skies seems to hollow us there, which, seek through the world, is never met with elsewhere. Home, sweet home, sweet home. Wait, let's listen, I'll, I'll say that again. Home, home. Sweet, sweet home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. And then on the next line, which is the next hymn. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. Farewell, ladies. Farewell, ladies. 
Sweet dreams, ladies. Sweet dreams, ladies. I want to play that game. <laughs> What's that one about? Okay, so here we go. Um, mid pleasures and palaces. Let's have a look at these stops. I look at them, I pull them out, and you hear them. That's how it works, isn't it? I beg your pardon. No metronome tonight, don't worry, for this one. Um, this looks like quite a gentle, quite a gentle one, I think. So let's, I think it is, let's see. Nice little tune. It's one of those sorts of hymns which I suspect has died into um, obscurity. Um, but, and I say that only because I've never heard it before. It hasn't been requested before in BIS, and it, this is a really old scan, which suggests there are no new additions. But a beautiful tune. Let's have a look at verse two. I gaze on the moon as I tread the drear wild and feel that my mother now thinks of her child. As she looks on that moon from our own cottage door, through the woodbine whose fragrance shall cheer me no more. So if you wanna go and check out that hymn, it's um, um, mid pleasures and palaces though we may roam. Okay, which then actually takes us into our final request, our pre-request for this week, which comes in from Peter Bray, who's requested an absolutely fantastic hymn. Fantastic hymn. Angel voices ever singing around thy throne of light. Let's have a look to see
what we can do with this one then. I see some colours flashing up on the screen. Evelyn, thank you very much for your um, two, whoops, two dollars. And your $10. That's very kind for donating twice and quick succession. Have I missed any? Uh, Brooks earlier said, the best virtual church service in the world. In the voice of Jeremy Clarkson. Thank you, Richard. Well, thank you, Brooks. Never mind. Thank you, me. Thank you, you. That's very kind. I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do this without you. Josh, how are we doing? Has the um, the stream settled down now in terms of buffering, or is it still playing up a little bit? So, angel voices ever singing around thy throne of light. Words uh, are by Francis Pott, and the music is by Edwin George Monk. This hymn deserves the kitchen sink, I think. And we will get there. Five verses, all five verses of this terrific hymn. Terrific hymn. It really is. So let's imagine, let's imagine this is a recessional of the morning service. So the clergy and the choir are all uh, walking out. Quite a big procession. Lots of incense. It's been an uplifting service. You know, big Mozart coronation mass setting. Choir on great form. It's Easter day. The weather's beautiful. Everyone's in a good mood. Everyone's going to go home and have a wonderful lunch. This is a recessional. And after this hymn, what voluntary is the organist playing in your dream? service. Imagine what I've just explained, that scenario. What does the organist play as a voluntary? Let me know. And you might get it.
See that the procession has just about finished, thank heavens. <laughs> this is one of the worst things um, about when you're playing the organ in a big service and you have a big hymn like that, for example, and th there is a procession or there is an offertory um, or there is incensing of the altar and the congregation. When you get to the end of the hymn and it, you know, it's quite exciting and you've really, you've worked up the organ, you've worked up the congregation and then you finish playing. It's one of the worst possible things to then look up at the camera or look over your shoulder and the hymn isn't long enough because it feels like such an anticlimax that the organist has messed up. The organist needs to play on to cover that gap, keep it, you know, extemporized just for maybe half a minute. But if, there's that, if, if the organist stops and thinks, whew, that was all right, wasn't it? And looks up in the camera and the organist, is, the conductor was going, oh, like that or something. It's then such a wet, a damp squid to then suddenly have to come back in on a quiet. You know, like, it's like nothing happened. No, it's intentional to give him F, F, F to piano. <laughs> anyway, so that, that actually marks the end of the um, pre-requests. I saw a, a colour flash up on the screen. Robert, hello. Happy New Year to you. Hello, friends. I have been away and missing this weekly uplifting music. Hello, Richard. Well, hello, Robert. Very Richard. good to see you, my friend. Who's Richard? I don't know. That's just how it came out on that on that occasion. That's that's how I pronounce my name from now on, Richard. Um, I was going to give everyone hearts because I'm in a heart mood tonight. Got the fire going tonight over there. I can I can see. That's why it's warm in here. <laughs> okay, so actually, um, what I I asked people in uh, to name a voluntary after that sort of imaginary recession. Uh, what? Oh, Robert Stevenson says Vidor 6 Finale. Yes, that'd be a good one. What? That would be good. That's that's a great suggestion. It would, wouldn't it? Uh, any, anything, can anything top that? that is, is that the only thing? Is that, has no one else come up with a, um, a voluntary? Oh my goodness. You guys, I asked you to do something for me. I don't ask much from you. And I had one voluntary. Oh, Nick Knight says, how about the Henry Smart postlude in D for the final voluntary? I don't think I know that one, actually. I've probably got a copy of it somewhere. Um, Richard Bimson says, I mean, how about it's a Guillemont's paraphrase on Judas Maccabeus? Yes, I, I do have that. I have played that before. I think I've got it on there, actually. Anyone else? Someone says the music man. I am the music man, I come from far away, and I can play. I'm not going to play that on Easter Day. That's not an Easter voluntary. Hugo likes that song. Hugo likes it. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not really sure if it's a sort of a, a Washington cathedral filled with people and incense going from angel voices straight into music man. Over the summer, I went to pick Hugo up from nursery one afternoon. Him and his friend Freddie were running Hugo around five. the garden running around the garden with plastic shovels, which they were pretending to play as guitars, singing Pia, Pia, Piano, Piano, Piano. They are very sweet, aren't they? Right, so uh, earlier on, we, I had a little request from organist Dan, who wants me to play, um, who sponsored Jesus You Joy of Man's Desiring. Well, of course I'll play that for you. And beautiful little ditty it is. I've got a, a nice arrangement of it here as well. So. I'll play that for you right now. Let me just have a think about these, these wee stops. Uh, what I'm going to do, let's do that and that. Let's have, what should we have as the right hand? Okay, let's have, I think that'll sound nice on this organ. That'll sound nice as well. Okay, so organist Dan, especially for you. Oh, Passacaglia in C minor. The only problem with Roger with the Passacaglia in C minor is, I mean, it's in the same key as, well, 
it's a minor, of course, but it's in the same key. It's in, going from C major and C minor, it's not the end of the world. But the way I play it is I play it, I start it quiet. So they would go, you'd go from a big C major chord, 32 rumbling around. So then, to then just this. <laughs> I think it would get uh, lost in the in the midst, uh, but some people play it uh, play it loudly to begin with. I think it, it would work in that instance, but maybe I, I'd have to adapt my registration. <laughs> right, let's have a go at Juicy Joy of Men's Desiring for organist Dan. Organist Dan, give me a little bit of um, uh, give me a little bit of context. Who are you? Are you an organist? Is your name Dan? And where in the world are you? In fact, yeah, let, let's let let's let Dan do that first. Such a gorgeous movement, isn't it, of the um, cantata? I forget which cantata it is now. <laughs> Any ideas? Afraid not. Oh. I can look it up though. No, so, can't we all? I, 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 I wouldn't know it as soon as you said it. 
It's going to go, yeah, one of the most famous pieces of classical music, isn't it? Most recognisable straight away, and rightly so. I've heard renditions of it done at this, this speed before. It's from the 1723 Advent Cantata, Herz und Mund und Tat und Lieben, BWV 147. That's it. Why play it that fast? Why? I'd, I'm, it wouldn't have been done that fast, I'm sure. It wouldn't have been done that fast. It wouldn't. Why would it have been done that fast? Composers, <laughs> composers often play their own pieces slower than everyone else. Have you noticed this? If you have a composer playing their music, they will often play it slower than other people will play it because they're enjoying it more and the sort of a composer won't always get the tempo right. It's a strange thing to say, isn't it? But but then when someone else comes to play it and interprets it in a different way, you think, ah, what a wonderful um, interpretation. So I think that would have been I would that would have been Bach would have conducted that quite slowly. I think. <laughs> I think. Organistan, what did Organistan say? Um, he said, I am an organist from Kent, and yes, my name is Dan. Well, thanks for clearing that up. And I recognise the, um, the picture that you use as your, your avatar as Rochester, because I was there recording fairly recently. Who is this? Please just put an ice cube in, my, in the um, BIS, BIS tip jar. It's Gregory. Matinee tickets, please. <laughs> I'm late. Well, here's your your ticket thank you very much for that that's very kind philip powell says in, re in regard to my um comment on composers playing things slower than other people vidor playing his own toccata yes well that's interesting because he was actually quite old when he did that he, there is a recording of him playing it but he was quite old and his fingers were a little bit old and not working quite as well as he used to so it's, there's something which about that recording is you think you take with a pinch of salt because he was old and he wasn't his best, basically. If there was a recording of him playing it when he was in his prime, that would be divinitive, obviously. Um, but And there's also recordings of Dupre playing Dupre, which you think, uh, oh, Dupre, are you playing all the right notes there? But again, his recordings were made when he was quite old as well. Philip, I, well, yeah, I, well, uh, have you heard my recording that I put online recently? Uh, I play it at Vidor's tempo and it actually, you know, it, it, I think it works remarkably well because of course the Toccata comes at the end of a big symphony, a 40 minute symphony of, of music and suddenly you get this very famous Toccata and if you just, if you smash your way through it, you know, like um, um, Diane Bish might have done or Simon Preston used to just play it at warp speed. I don't, it's not very exciting. It doesn't. It doesn't command the gravitas. It's not. It's not thrilling. It's just a bit of a noise. But it, if you play it a bit slower, and those those big Kavai Karl organs, um, they were grand. And if you haven't heard an, an organ, like if you haven't heard Sad's Little Piece at full, at full tilt or uh, Notre Dame, it's a. It's astonishing. They they roar, and they they need time to speak. So I think. I know we've gone off we've gone off topic from Bach onto you know Kavai Coles, but it's yeah having a tempo is a all subjective. Isn't it? Anyway, we could have right we could go on for ages about sub, about about tempi. So Bill Ratey, this is a Bill Ratey show tonight, which is fine by me. But Bill Ratey, by the looks of it, has requested um, praise my soul, the King of Heaven. These are good. That's, this is a good hymn, isn't it? Well, let's have that one quick. Let's have it quick, because I want to play that one. It's fantastic. It's definitely in here. Praise my soul. The King of Heaven. To his, his feet, my tribute to bring. Sean, thank you. Thank you for your fiver. That's very kind. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go. Praise my soul.
an opportunity for me to plug my uh, hem video, which I put out just after Christmas, I think, of hymns from Southwark Cathedral, in which, on which I play that hymn. A terrific, terrific organ in central London, um, in a wonderful cathedral, I think seven hymns or so. Go and check it out. That hymn sounds fantastic on that organ. Now, as I was playing that hymn, the voice inside the room said, oh, I found the answer, and I have no idea what the question was. Oh, I wanted to know how I could charge my phone in here. <laughs> well, you... that's no fun. <laughs> right, okay. Nothing well, that exciting. I thought it was going no, to be worry. something quite profound or no, something. No, sorry, sorry. Oh, dear. Sorry about that. So, where are we up to then, producers, <laughs> helpers? Where are we up to? Let's go in with... Um, uh, Bill at Rating has requested a hymn on behalf of, or has he? No, he hasn't. Uh, you're, you're going to send it to me on an email, apparently. Oh, that's uh, exciting. Oh, let's hope it's there then, because I've everyone's expecting it to be there. There. Uh, oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Help! There's some Swingle Singers chat in the chat. That's all the Swingle Singers I'm afraid, Bill, your email hasn't worked. <sighs> That's all I can see, Bill. There's not much music there. That's all I can see. I'm clicking it, but it doesn't do anything. Sorry. OK, let's move on to someone else. Bill will, Bill's um, tech, tech savvy sense. enough to sort it out. He'll be sorting it out in no time. Um, Okay, so we actually, um, we do now have this um, request called Good Night Ladies. <laughs> oh, what? congratulations, Robert. Robert Salaski's just had his first grandson. Oh, yay. That's amazing news. Congratulations to you and to your, uh, I, I, is it your son or your daughter? Congratulations, whoever. Thank you very much, Robert, for your fifty pound, fifty dollars. What's his name, Robert? Yeah, that's interesting. What's you really might not want to say, but no, that's true. Um, yeah, thank you, Robert. That's and it was amazing. We, we have a, we know what it's like to have young boys. Young boy, should I say? Very nice. John Mark. There we go. Great names. New, New Testament. Our daughter, there we go, so it's your, it's your daughter, lovely. Congratulations, that's amazing. What, what would you like me to play? Holy, holy, holy. To celebrate that. Now I see her. Yeah, I think so. Well, I think we ought to do that right away because that is something to celebrate. The birth of a healthy young boy. Or a girl, you know, whatever sex it is, a boy or girl. That's to celebrate. Where is it then? Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. I probably don't, to be honest, I don't even need this because I've played this one so many times. But I'll have it there just as a safety net. This is the case. first time you ever played, wasn't it? As it was. a youngster. It was indeed. Um, let's, it was, I remember that well. And let's just have a little bit of fun <laughs> with it, with a bit of, um, let's have a bit of fun with, with um, Ross Thorne McVeigh. Okay, Robert, this is for you and for your daughter, and of course, to your brand spanking new grandson, John Mark. I, I'm sorry, that's not the first note. That wasn't that's even it. Bobby. You can't even blame Bobby. No, I blame YouTube. <laughs>
There we go. Congratulations once again. Fabulous news and a fabulous hymn. So thank you very much for your donation. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. The tune, as you all know by now, is called Nicaea, written by John Dykes, 1823 to 1876. Words of our Reginald Heber. Heber, Heber. H E B E R. Splendid, as Gregory says. Absolutely splendid. Okay, let's go on to. Where do we go next? I think Daniel Kubaki's request. Oh, yes. Good night, ladies. On email, isn't it? Yeah, he sent it. Yeah. So strange key signature. I've never seen one of those before. But. Hmm. Oh. I think it's a normal. Ooh. Trouble class rather than anything Ooh. anything funky. Has anyone else seen seen a key signature? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, um, a, a clef like that before? Can you see that? A uh, wonky H. What's that? What is that? <laughs> Obviously didn't take off, did it? <laughs> this publisher thought they'd try something new. I've never seen that before. Okay, a, a couple of verses of this, because um, it's just a bit of fun. Um, Okay, let's have a go, let's have a go, let's have a go, let's have a go. Cool. Entirely sure that's how it's meant to be played, but, <laughs> but there we go. Gotta have fun with it. Well, the words of the chorus are merrily. We roll, we roll along, roll along, roll along merrily. We roll along over the dark blue sea. So it's quite an uplifting one. So yeah. Okay, let's go. Where are we going next? Any suggestions? Well. I'm just looking. I think this might be the wrong ancient and modern. Let me have a look. Okay. Well, was it, uh, I saw something. Oh no! Was... Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, this is um, Evelyn Dewa, I think Dewa D E W A R. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, wrong right. Evelyn. Today I awake and God is before me. A tune is called Slithers of Gold. 
Okay. So uh, today I awake and God is before me. Uh, at night, as I dreamt, He summoned the day, for God never sleeps, but patterns the morning with slivers of gold, or glory in grey. Well, let's have a go with this. Let's. This is probably not quite as rowdy as the previous hymn. If I'm honest, um, so let's just... you, it was title was Good Night Ladies. Oh, no, that's what, that's what tickled me about it. Really. <laughs> a typical naval hymn, isn't it? I'm talking about ladies. Anyway, so slivers of gold. Here we go. Not a hymn that I uh, knew at all, Evelyn. So, but thank you very much for sending that one through and a beautiful tune. And um, I hope everyone else enjoyed that. That was that was a one of those occasions when I didn't know the hymn I was playing, and I suspect a lot of people also didn't know it. So it's a good way to learn and introduce ourselves to new stuff. So, so Evelyn. Thank you very much. So next, Richard, would you like to play Come Come Ye Saints, requested by Bill, or would you like to play Michael Paradise's request, which is slain, Lord of All Hopefulness? I'll go for Lord of All Hopefulness, I think, next. Something that people will definitely know. It's good to go from and an unknown one into a well-known one. Thank you very much, Michael. It's his first time requesting. Excellent. Michael who? Michael Paradise, I can yeah, see. Michael Paradise. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, for your request and sponsorship. Lord of all hopefulness. For who? Who's requested this one? Michael. Michael Paradise. Oh, this is for Michael. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Slain. One of the great tunes. Um, uh, this version harmonised by Eric um, Rootley. Or it could be Routley. This is the one that harmonisation that I know. I know different hymn books have different harmonisations, but 
can't hear another harmonization to this tune, I'm afraid. This is this or nothing to, for me. Most, I think most people will agree. Hands, give me a thumbs up if this is the correct version that you know. Give me a thumbs down if you know and prefer another harmonization. <laughs> It is really, as Lewis Harvey has just said, a cracking tune this. It really is a stunning tune, isn't it? And I'm very pleased that I did not see a single thumbs down. Um, which is interesting because a lot of hymn books have different harmonizations uh, to it. And I just think I just think to myself, when I see different harmonizations, I just think, why? Why change something so perfect? For example, for those people who don't know what I'm talking about, let me just, I've picked up a, a hymn book, but the, first, the nearest one that I've picked up, and it's the hymnal 1982. Let's have a look to see whether this one has a different harmonization. This, this, hymn, this hymn book actually is quite faithful. I, I like this hymn book. It's got some good stuff in it. So here is a different harmonization of this um, beautiful tune. Listen to this, see what you think.
and that's not actually uh, by any means one of the the worst that I've ever heard. That's one that one isn't actually that bad. But I've heard a lot. You know, I've had some terrible harmonisations. I just think, how can you possibly s screw it up? Because it's such a beautiful tune. The melody is just stunning, and it just you've wrecked it. But anyway, that's that's that. that so the harmonisation by Eric Rootley or Eric Rouxley is, I think, the one for me, and it's, I think by the looks of it, uh, the one for most people as well. Thomas just says, either tune, Richard plays it magnificently. Well, Thomas, that's very kind. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, Barbara Clark says, Slain is so beautiful. I agree with that. And Brendan Nolan says, I have to say, I like the first harmonisation better. It's the one I use. Okay, so let's now go into our next one, which is... Bill Racy's request, which the second email he sent is, oh, yes, that one is we, the correct one. We have had this before, and I remember this. I, I haven't even turned the page, but I remember, Bill, this goes through lots of keys, doesn't it? Is it that one? I think we've had it before. Is it, on, is it a, 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 um, a hymn tune? I think I need a little bit of context as to what this is, because I don't know what it is. It must be a hymn. Well, I think it was after you played Psalm 23. Yeah. Um, it just, and he's just said that it echoes the Psalm 23 reassurance. Oh, OK. I think when you played Crimmond earlier. Yeah. I think it so. was sort of in a, following that theme. So Bill will, um, I'm sure, uh, put the text in the chat for everyone to follow along. Um, here we go. So I've got, a, let me get the, the, the page turns working this time. There we go. Let me just have a quick look. So it goes, goes all over the place of the keys. So it, so 63, let me get the tempo right, Bill, because I got the tempo wrong a few last time, didn't I? So 63. Where is it? 63, it says here. Oh, well, that's, quite, that's quite steady, isn't it? Yeah, we can manage that. Let's have a sight read through this then. With Bill Ratey, who will put the words in the, tech, in the chat, but it's come, come ye saints.
hand over to Carol. So I think there was some chat about this in the chat, but Bill has written in his email, <clears throat> Mormon pioneers sang this when they traveled from Illinois to Utah, and often some would perish on the trek. The refrain reminded them that their Lord and Savior, as well as the kingdom of heaven, awaited them no matter when they arrived. I'm descended from Mormon pioneers through both my parents. Okay. Now. Okay, so well, thank you very much, um, um, Bill, here. for that. And Lindeberg. Do you know the tune Lindeberg? I, um, mm, well, in that case, hand. I'll look for it. Um, in the meantime, Robert Selaski has asked for Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. Okay, great him, and we'll, I will, we will have that in a minute. He said in the Virgil Fox style, if you want. I don't know, do you know I know what I know what he means by that. Is it very, very slow? <laughs> very, very slow. <coughs> <coughs> With a poor soprano, um, a parotic soprano singing next to him, and, and she's having to play it, <coughs> sing it at his speed, and I don't, she must have had lungs of steel to have been able to... Have, um, sung a phrase for that long because it yeah it's extraordinary well where is it well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find one for tim carrington is it in here oh praise oh praise ye the lord might not be in here actually no, it's not what the parry yeah just said we get it in the neh or the reh oh well it's the neh is number 400 and um 417 or something like that. It's not 417. Oh, uh, 427. Oh, to be fair, I said 417, but it's actually 427. That's very good. Come on. But I need some praise for that. That was pretty cool. Right, so Tim Carrington. How are you, Tim? Are you, are you feeling any better today? Requested this wonderful, wonderful hymn by Parry. It comes from... Okay, I'm going to ask you, from which monumental anthem by Parry does this tune come? Eleanor Hart, thank you very much. That's a, a good request, thank you. Yeah, do that one definitely.
didn't get the answer right. The question was, from which anthem does this tune come? Ian Garden got it. Was Ian Garden the only one to get you it? You say I it every time. So it was. Well, there's only one person. They're not person. listening. They don't listen. They don't listen to a word I say. <laughs> Literally, you I mean, say it every 260 time. people words, are watching, people. I ask a question and one person answers it. It just goes to show, I don't need to be here. And you I tell literally them don't need to be week, here. Every time you play that hymn, you, well, you trot so out the, the same So what's the excuse? <laughs> what's the excuse? Everyone should know the answer. But no one bothers to answer it. Um, so <laughs> They're all talking amongst themselves. Lind Lindeberg, it's not a tune. I wasted precious time looking for it. It's in reference to the jersey that you're wearing tonight, which was a gift from your dad at Christmas. Apparently, it's a very fine golf clothing brand, and you're <laughs> modelling it Is very it? well tonight. And I said, I don't yeah. think Richard would be aware of the brand, but Ian was impressed. Dad bought me a golf jumper. He did. A golfing jumper for Christmas. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> good chappy, have we been told off? Not seriously, good chappy, I wouldn't worry. Don't lose any sleep over it. It's not. <laughs> and next one is for Eleanor Hart. Um, she's asked for the London Derriere. To the, to the words, I cannot tell why he whom angels worship, which is in the ancient and modern, but I think the tune, the, the um, key is better in this hymn book, isn't it? So I got it in the N-E-H, R-E-H. Because isn't it in a different key in the... I don't know, is it in, in the C? Other? Yeah, this is the best version in here. So it's from for Eleanor Hart, is it? It is. I cannot yeah. tell why him, he, whom angels worship. If you have time. Well, we've got time for you, Eleanor. Always got time for you, Eleanor. You're a heritage long-term... Oh, what's your favourite organ listener. piece, Eleanor? I think I have a, a sneaky suspicion as to what it might be, actually. I seem to remember. What is your favourite organ piece? And you might get it. If you're lucky. <laughs>
Thank you very much, um, Eleanor, for requesting uh, for requesting that. Isn't that a wonderful um, hymn? Eleanor, I knew you were going to say that particular piece. Would you like me to play it for you? I would be very happy to do so if you would like. In fact, do you know what? Don't I forget Robert Selaski's last I'm hymn. I'm going to play it. Um, because I don't know, you've been, I think, a, a, probably a long, certainly at least a long, long term listener. So I like to treat my um, supporters as, um, as well as possible. So let's have a go at this one. So this is the Elegy at Thalban Ball, and then I'm going to play uh, Robert Salaski's Hymn Request, which is Oh God. Our help in ages past. Then I'm going to go into the voluntary. So it's got quite a few things to. Um, yeah, definitely. He was definitely joking to... about Virgil Fox. He said it twice now. <laughs> <laughs> so right, just to be clear, you don't want me to play it like Virgil Fox, right? <laughs> just making absolutely triple sure. I think if you play it like Virgil Fox, he'll we'd be here all day. Revoke his yeah. donation. Oh no, can't have that. No, I don't know. That's a joke. Um, right, let's go into a piece by Elegy. The bells are ringing, which means um, the, uh, the bell ringers are wanting to go home, so that's... Oh, before you start this, yep. um, your mum, Kay, is in the chat. Hello, Hello. Kay. A VIP, a VIM, a very important mum. Um, she said, was, we were talking about Trevor Orm, our dear friend, because there were a few goat uh, emojis while you were playing that last hymn, and I said, right. people in the chat yep. who remember Trevor um, um, fondly if, they, if he comes to mind, we tend to put a goat emoji in the chat. And Good Chappie was asking, where did this goat thing first come from? And it was when you were doing your very first marathon on the yep. old Viscount. So yep. if anyone would care to go back through all the organ marathons and find the first one that Richard did and go to the last hour between 11 and 12 hours, just look at the live chat with Trevor Orme and you'll find out where the goat thing came from. I don't even know where it came from, to be honest. He made himself the scapegoat for a lot of bad behaviour. Oh, You'd been playing for 11 hours, you were playing Cocker's Tuba Tune, and he was, he was being outrageous. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, as the, um, the bells are in this weird key of B, let's just try something a bit outrageous, because these bell ringers are not going to stop okay, anytime B soon. B for Bobby. So let's see what uh, elegy, the Thalban Ball elegy sounds like, rather it's normally in B flat major, which is quite a dark key. Let's try playing it in a brighter key of B major. I don't know, I've, I've never heard it or played it in, in B major before, so it'll be an interesting experiment to see whether, to see what it sounds like in the key of B major. Let me know what you think about it in this key.
Well, what, are, what other um, organ piece could you play following on from, of course, um, the St Anne, O oh God, our help in ages past? It's not based on that hymn at all. Bach would have very unlikely have known the tune, but it's very, very similar, isn't it? transposed um, but it's very similar so Bach's uh, fugue from the E flat uh, St Anne which marks the end of today's virtual church so thank you all so much for uh, joining in with me tonight by the way have you all seen um, the BIS marketplace which is a new um, a new thing for BIS really if you've got an organ for sale, if you want to sell your organ, or if you want to sell organ tech, you can sell it on the BIS marketplace. It's for organ stuff. The idea is that it brings together everything to do with the organ, and people can search on the BIS marketplace for their organ tech. It brings it under one roof, on, on one platform. There is an organ for sale on the BIS marketplace right now. It's a very fine organ. Um, built by the same people who built this organ actually um, it's online take a look BIS marketplace uh, spread the word <laughs> I really enjoyed tonight's virtual church and um, thank you very much for to Ferrari for your pink hand do you want to see what, hear what Garrett said Richard I of course my peak experience with this fragment as in of the fugue is Richard playing it in Harlem Wow. Oh, yeah. So but that, this is impressive too. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? But I, I didn't have, um, I, I wasn't shouting to Caroline, change the angle, change the angle. No, not that one, not that one, the other one. I wasn't having to do that in Harlem, was I? <laughs> but if you, if you'll, you'll remember, Garrett, that I actually, there were various gaps where I stopped playing so I could y yank out a few stops here and there. But yeah, well, that was an amazing experience, wasn't it? Bobby, and the builder for this organ is um, Renatus. Uh, they built it, um, but I went through the company Romsey Organ Works, and, and they get, uh, they're basically a front of house uh, for Renatus, who, who do all of the you know, manual labor and um, um, woodwork, you know, joinery, That's, and they're phenomenal. So there we go. Um, I will say now a good night. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Um, hope you're all keeping um, dry because it's very wet out there by the sounds of it. It's windy. Um, and I washed the car earlier as well. It's going to be storm dirty again. Storm Isha, is it, this time? And it's always, there's a storm the every week, time, isn't it? The last storm was called Storm Garrett. There was a time, yeah. <laughs> there was a time when storms were named it was once a year or something, but we've had three in about three weeks. Oh, we're on the letter I already, and that must so, be 2024. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, well, good night, everyone. You take care, you stay safe, and until next time, we'll both say cheerio. Cheerio, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>